My name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course! Since I mentioned that when you go from an acyclic monosaccharide to a cyclic monosaccharide, you create a hemiacetal bond, I wanted to go through the hemiacetal and hemiketal formations with you so that you don't get confused before we go into other stuff. And so, to form a hemiacetal, you need an aldehyde and an alcohol. So if you remember, we used the aldehyde at the very top of the acyclic structure and reacted it with the fifth carbon OH group, right? And so when you have an aldehyde and an alcohol, you can form a hemiacetal, which is this ROC bond right here, which you can see when you form the structures that look like this. And so when you go from acyclic to cyclic, you're forming a hemiacetal bond. And now if you have a ketone and you have an alcohol, then you have a hemiketal bond. And so basically, depending on whether you have an aldehyde or a ketone in your monosaccharide, you're going to end up with a hemiacetal or a hemiketal when you fold it up. Also, I wanted to show you right here that if you have a disaccharide, which again I'll go over in more detail later on, if you have two carbons linked by an acetal functional group, it's COCOC. And if you have this case, you have fixed alpha or beta configurations. But if you have a hemiacetal, where you have CO, COH, where this is like an R group, then you have a hemiacetal functional group. And in this case, because of this OH, we have an alpha or beta mix. So again, you probably won't go through stuff like this in too much detail in this course, but keep in mind that if you have an acetal group, which has this form, you have a fixed alpha or beta configuration. If you have a hemiacetal, which is when you have an OH group instead of an OR group, then you're going to have an alpha or beta mixture. 